Hello and welcome to British English with Alexander. Welcome to another lesson from our lo lovely advanced grammar in news. My goodness, how lovely that book is. This is from Cambridge University by Martin Hewings. This is a self-study reference and practice book for advanced learners of English. This is my favorite British advanced advanced British English grammar in news. So we're talking about proper English actually. Okay, before we get started, please I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel to English learners, English speakers all over the world. We're teaching grammar here, which is really useful and really important, fundamental actually, for you to understand proper English or advanced English. I have to tell you if you are new to that channel, experience has shown me that this is a really effective way of studying in. By reading, by studying out loud, you're gonna be able to learn pronunciation, connected speech, intrusive R, alliteration, elision, <coughs> all those specific circumstances that are used to help you improve your English. But most importantly, by studying like that, you're gonna be able to to learn grammar and at the same time you'll be learning pr pronunciation, as I've already said, but fundamentally you're gonna bring your vocabulary to thousands and thousands of words because you've got to, to hear the way English is spoken. If you only read English, your brain is not gonna be able to record the meanings of the words. So you've got to study, study the words, grammar, all the things by reading, by reading it out loud. Believe me. Okay, so let's continue with, let's keep up the good work. This is unit 23. Out of 100, we're gonna reach there. Okay, we're considering now forming passive sentences too. We talked about forming passive sentences one in the previous lesson and this is forming passive sentences two. We're talking now about verb plus ing form or to infinitive. Okay, let's move on. This is section A. We're gonna be talking about active patterns with verb plus ing. So let's go. Verbs followed by object <coughs> plus ing in the active are made passive with b plus past participle plus ing. For example, they saw the monkey climbing over the fence. This is in the active form. They saw, this is the verb in the past simple, the past tense. They saw what? The monkey. This is the object, and this is the ing form of the verb to climb. They saw the monkey climbing over the fence. They saw what? The monkey. They saw the monkey doing what? Climbing over the fence. This is in the active. Okay, so the point is, we want to, we want to put that sentence in the passive form. So how do we do that? It's quite simple. They saw the monkey climbing over the fence. They saw what? The monkey. So this is the object. So we use the object as the subject in the passive. For example, the monkey was seen climbing over the fence. It's in the passive. The monkey was seen climbing over the fence. So we're giving emphasis to the fact that the monkey was seen climbing over the fence. <coughs> So we put the monkey was, this is the verb to be, plus past participle of the verb to see, which is seen, and then the ing form of the verb to climb. <coughs> so it's quite simple. It's quite straightforward. Also, we use that pattern with the verbs. 
to bring to cut bring cut here find keep notice observe sand shall there's no secret to that rule okay moving on to section B some verbs that can be followed by an ing form can be used with a passive form being plus passive participle so for example I really love being given presents I really love being given being given presents another example the children enjoyed being taken to the zoo the children enjoyed being taken to the zoo so this is the passive use with being plus passive participle I really love this is the pre in the present being plus passive participle of the verb to give I really love being given presents and the children enjoyed being taken to the zoo we use that pattern with the verbs also with the verbs to avoid deny describe dislike face hate not imagine imagine like remember report and resent okay moving on this is section C verbs which in the active are followed by an object consisting of a noun a noun phrase and an ing an ing clause usually have no passive so for example I'd read him finding out or I'd read his finding out I'd read him finding out or I'd read his finding out we can't say he's dreadfully finding out no I'd read him finding out or I'd read his finding out no passive for that pattern also with the verbs to anticipate to appreciate to dislike to forget to hate to imagine to like not mind to recall and remember okay moving on to section D we're considering here active patterns with the verb plus to infinitive the active pattern verb plus object plus to infinitive is made passive with B plus past participle plus to infinitive compare Mr. Wong has taught Peter to sing for years Mr. Wong has taught Peter to sing for years so we've got the verb has taught object Peter to sing to infinitive Mr. Wong has taught Peter to sing for years and uh, we've got f for the passive forms this is the ob ob object we, we put it uh, as a subject in the passive form Peter has been taught to sing or Peter has been taught to sing by Mr. Wang for years and the first example Peter has been taught to sing for years you might omit the agent by Mr. Wang so we've got the, for the passive B has been taught past participle of the verb to teach and then to infinitive to sing Peter has been taught to sing for years by Mr. Wang if you think that it is important or if you want to, to mention the agent of the sentence and the passive form we use that pattern also with those following verbs advise allow ask believe consider expect feel instruct mean order require tell and understand note that in some contexts it is possible to make both the verbs passive for example tends to the taxation system are expected to be proposed compare the active we expect the government to propose a changes to the taxation system so for the verb to expect 
and do for the verbs to propose in the active. Notice that in the passive way, both of both of them are in the passive. For expect, we've got expected, and for propose, we've got proposed. So we might say we expected the government to propose changes to the taxation system, but in the passive, we might say. We can say changes to the taxation system are expected to be proposed, and it's okay. Some verbs followed by an object plus two infinitive in the active have no passive. For example, Susan liked the cow to be there, but we can't say something like that. The cow was likely to be there. No, it's impossible. Susan liked the cow to be there, only in the active. We've got no passive for that sentence. And also, we use that pattern for the verbs. Bear or can't bear, hate, love, need, prefer, want, wish. Those are liking and wanting verbs. This is a tip for remembering them. Okay, moving on to section E. The active pattern verb plus to infinitive plus object is made passive with verb plus to be plus passive participle compare. Supermarkets started to sell fresh pasta only in the 1990s. So here we've got verb started plus to infinitive to sell plus object. So supermarkets supermarkets started it to sell what? Supermarkets started it to sell fresh pasta. Fresh pasta is the object. Only in the 1990s. How do we make a passive form from that one? We take the object and put it as the subject in the passive form. For example, fresh pasta started to be sold by supermarkets only in the 1990s. So we've got the verb started, then the verb to be, plus past the participle of the verb, in that case of the verb to sell, which gets sold. So fresh pasta started to be sold by supermarkets only in the 1990s. Okay. Just to remember, in the active form, we're emphasizing that supermarkets started to sell fresh pasta only in the 1990s. When we, we put that sentence in the passive, I don't want to give emphasis to supermarkets, but I want to put emphasis on the fact that fresh pasta started to be sold. I might, I might not even mention supermarkets. I might simply say fresh pasta is started to be sold only in the 1990s. So that's the importance of understanding active forms and passive forms. That pattern is used also with the verbs from group I. We say the verbs appear, begin, come, continue, seem, tend, and from the group II agree, aim, arranged, attempt, hope, refuse, and want. Okay, the verbs in group I and start have corresponding meanings in active and passive sentences, but the verbs in group II do not compare. People have come to see organic food as something only the wealth eat. It's in the active. People have come to see organic food as something only the wealthy eat. It's in the active. It corresponds to in the passive, of course. Organic food has come to be seen as something only the wealthy eat. Again, organic food has come to be seen as something only the wealthy eat. It's in the passive. So, they have corresponding meanings in active and passive sentences from the group I. On the other hand, for example, 
Petra wanted to help me. It's in the active. Petra wanted to help me in the active. It does not correspond to I wanted to be helped by Petra. Because in the first example, Petra wanted to help me. She wanted to help me. And when we put it in the passive, I wanted to be helped by Petra, that means that I wanted the help. It's in the opposite case. Okay, and that brings us to the end of the lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel. Share the content with English students, English learners all over the world to help the channel to grow. I really believe that it is an effective way to improve your English and bring it to the highest level. After all, this is proper English. We're considering advanced grammar to bring your English to the next level, the highly advanced level. That's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Have a good one. Cheers.